It's time for the The Douglas Douglas Coleman Coleman Show. Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators, the famous and not so famous, the controversial and the light and fluffy, we have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome back to the Douglas Coleman Show, Jennifer Zhang. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, the reason that we reached out to you was that we saw a tweet come up on, I think it was Newsmax, a couple of days ago regarding mm-hmm. a possible coup in China. And I think it was your tweet. And mm-hmm. they had actually referenced it. And I remembered, oh, you were on the show about a, a year or two ago. And we were talking mm-hmm. about COVID at that time. And yes. so I thought I would reach out and ask you. Now, the American news agencies have not said anything else after that. That was the only thing I saw. Is this still at a rumor stage or is something really going on in China? Uh, uh, this, uh, we can now say this has confirmed to be untrue because Xi Jinping actually came out again uh, reappeared, uh, we can put it this way, reappeared after disappearing for 10 days yesterday. He visited a uh, exhibition center in Beijing with six other CCP members of the Standing Politburo, which shows he's still in office, he's still in charge, he's still in power. So we, we now we can say, oh, the room, the rumor uh, about the coup uh, had been very, very hot and trending on Twitter, which shows, I think, we can only say that many people are very enthusiastic uh, to to spread this rumor. It express people, perhaps, it express people's wish that he will go. Okay. This is what we can say. So where did the uh, video come from? The, the one on Twitter? Uh, come from the Chinese uh, social media platform. Uh, the, yeah, it really shows a lot of military vehicles heading somewhere. And because those few days, it was ve- it was a very sensitive stage. We can say people, you know, many people tend to think or believe a coup had happened because they do have some, uh, I think, very solid reasons. And the one, Xi Jinping was absent from a military, high-level military meeting, and that was very rare. And two, one of the the commander called Li Qiaoming, which was removed by him on, uh, as late on September 8, as the commander of Northern War, War Zone, reappeared in that meeting and Xi Jinping was not there. So all these kind of, you know, including the videos and not only that one video, actually as early as September 7th, there were videos of gunshots, fire explosions, jetter flights, you know, of uh, spreading in, in on the internet. So that was, we can say, a very sensitive period of time uh, because he disappeared after he returned from the uh, his visit, his first overseas visit in three years in Central uh, Asia. He disappeared for 10 days. So people would uh, really uh, wonder to know what happened. And uh, the many sides showing that in very intense power struggles were happening inside the CCP. So this was actually not the first time of a coup, you know, uh, a rumor of a coup, you know, spreading on the internet. I I think in May this year, there was uh, also a a rumor about a coup happening inside the military spreading on the internet. Only maybe that time it's not as hot as this time because the CCP's 20th National Congress is is very close. It's on October 16th. So at such a sensitive time, 
and people, I think, would tend to be more sensitive to those kind of uh, information. Well, wasn't uh, transport shut down in Beijing and flights canceled, trains canceled, things like that during that time? Oh, yes, yes. I forgot to mention, yes, that 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 happened actually on September uh, 21st. Uh, 60% of all the flights in China were canceled. That was nearly 10,000 flights canceled. I tweeted about this. So, and, and without any reason. So, of course, people would wonder such a large scale cancellation of flights was very, very unusual. So, I think all this and, and a few to the flame that made many people believe a coup had happened. And also, I think even if it's not a, a real coup or substantial coup, but some kind of coup to a, some kind of extent might have already happened. And then maybe the CCP, different fractions within the CCP during those 10 days when Xi Jinping was absent, they were, I, I think, they were very busy maybe negotiating, the, uh, bar bargaining and uh, fighting with each other. And then finally, they reached some kind of, uh, you know, compromise or agreement. And then they came out again uh, and to show a unit of the party because I think all different fractions inside the CCP still want to maintain the image of the CCP and, and maintain the power of the CCP because all their interests rely on the existence of the CCP. So the matter between them is only who will be the boss. So, 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 so in, at some stage or in some certain circumstances, uh, they may act together to, to maintain the outside image of, of the CCP. And the coup, like, you know, very high level coup did happen in the Chinese, in the CCP's history before, like the Gang of Four was removed uh, after a coup uh, that, that happened after, you know, uh, the, the, the Cultural Revolution. And that also end, ended the the Cultural Revolution. So, so people's, I think you, you can't blame that people's imagination really run wired during those few days. Yes, you, I think you, you are right. Not only the cancellation of flights, but also there are some abnormal thing happening with the high uh, speed rail system. So, so there are many uh, abnormal things happening. Still, we don't know the answer yet. Right, and the video did show a lot of military vehicles heading towards Beijing, but we don't know why they were going or what they were doing once they got there, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, do we know what happened to, to Xi Jinping for those uh, 10 days that he was missing? Did he say, did he go on vacation, or where did he go? <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, no indication at all. They just uh, reported about his his visit to that ex exhibition center, showing him still in charge, but no explanation whatsoever. So we still have to guess. Actually, I'm. I will go. I will going to do a program maybe tonight on my YouTube channel, Inconvenient Truths by Jennifer Zhen, to talk about three possibilities of his, you know, what he has, what has he been doing or what he has, or, the, or three possibility of the reasons of his 10 day disappearance. Oh, okay. Well, I'd, I'll take a look at that and be interesting to see what you say. Um, yeah. I wanted to just ask you a hypothetical question. That mm -hmm. if there was in fact a coup mm -hmm. in China, what mm -hmm. if, if any, uh, what, what would that have in any sort of meaning for the United States, even if we knew about it? I mean, would it just be like, okay, they've changed leadership, they have a new president, and that would be the end of that? Or would there be more serious implications for the United States? I think um, maybe for me, I don't think there will be any real significant meaning 
even if a coup does happen and another CCP leader, you know, gets into power, as long as the system of the CCP, the party of the CCP is still there, I think the essence of its nature will not change. And it's just, oh, oh maybe it's, uh, it's somebody does, does it slowly, somebody does it of more fastly the one way or the other. But at the end of the day, the CCP made it very clear, or the Communist Party made it very clear in its Communist Manifesto. The CCP's ultimate goal is to liberate liberate the entire humanity and to smash all the existing civilization and culture. So that's the ultimate goal of the communism. Only, you know, in Deng Xiaoping's time, Jiang Zemin's time, Hu Jintao's time, they they realized that their power w- was not enough to achieve their ultimate goal. So they said that we we hide our lights and abide, abide in our time. We we do you know opening and reform. We develop economy. But as soon as economy was strong enough, they started to do what Xi Jinping has been doing now. So without those several decades, uh, there. And also, we need to remember Xi Jinping was chosen by those CCP elders to be the successor of Hu Jintao. So without those years, we the CCP wouldn't have such economic might or power to do the damage it is doing now and to show its muscle to the entire world to be so uh, uh, threatening. So I think one way or another, it's just how it go, it reaches there, but it it, it will, uh, I think, do what it has been doing. So not much difference if the CCP is still, is still there. But of course, for, on the short term, maybe the, you can say the micro policy may be um, uh, some somewhat different. Maybe this one will be too friendly or to America, but ultimately the nature of the CCP will not change. And the fact, even during this most open years, the CCP have never, I think, uh, easy its control in the political area. And uh, like Deng Xiaoping said, even if we kill 200,000 uh, people, if we can maintain our regime for another 20 years, it's worthwhile. Let's we do it. So this kind of regime, whichever leader, they are they are the same. Uh, just on the surface, they may adopt different policies, but the essence is the same. It's anti humanity and uh, it will never uh, allow Chinese people freedom and democracy. So we should remember this very clearly. So you don't ever see a time when China becomes or the collapse of the CCP in the near future, no? No, I don't I don't say that. I think the CCP will surely collapse sooner or later because Chinese people has a saying for many years, if we don't fight against corruption, uh, the, the nation, the country is doomed. If we fight against corruption, the party is doomed. So I think the all different kind of aspect of China has reached to a state where I think it's like a high pressure pot. The pressure inside the pot is so high, it will explode one way or the, or the other, sooner or later. Only we don't know when and how that it, it will happen. But the, the current model of governance cannot last forever because it now the CCP has more police than its army. It's spending more so-called stability maintenance fee uh, than its military expense. So it's spending more money to crack down on its people than it's spending on its military expenses. So that it actually uh, targets or regards every single Chinese people as a potential enemy of its regime. So that, so the, the pressure it is mounting, they are used more and more severe 
uh, you can say surveillance system and the suppression system to suppress Chinese people. To the extent now the so-called zero, zero COVID policy is they install a health code on your telephone. They lock people up at the home and starve pe people starve to, to death in their home. And uh, only not long ago, 27 people were killed when they were transferred from one city to another city to maintain the zero COVID case in an, in one of the cities. So if this kind of thing keep happening, I don't think the CCP will be capable of maintain this kind of high pressure forever. I, it will, I think, run out of its resources. It will run out of it's money and the economy is going down. And this, I think the Zemimbi Yuan today just dropped back to a very important benchmark. So 7.2, you know, now one Zemimbi Yuan only can exchange, or 70.2 Zemimbi Yuan can only exchange to $1. So the foreign investment are running out of China. Many rich Chinese people are trying desperately to run out of China. So this kind, this kind of state cannot last forever. So the collapse of the CCP, I believe, is surely to happen. It's only a matter of when and how. Uh, what happened to Jack Ma? Did he get out? Uh, I believe he's still under control. He, I think he... He went to Europe a while ago to to show that he's still alive, or, or maybe inside China he made, a, uh, I think, a video experience, uh, appearance and some kind of a uh, teacher's uh, day event or that sort of thing. But other than those, I think he's still very much nowhere <laughs> to be seen. I think his company is still um, very much in trouble. The Alibaba Corporation, yeah? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to uh, get your opinion on Taiwan. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of American politicians raising the flags, being very concerned that Taiwan was next, uh, that China... China has always had interest in taking Taiwan, but now it seems people are talking about it a lot more. And there's mm -hmm. questions with the Biden administration as to whether or not the U.S. would support Taiwan, would defend mm -hmm. Taiwan, or if we would mm -hmm. just let them you know, deal with it on their own. How likely do you think it is that the Chinese would militarily invade Taiwan? I think the, it, is, it is highly possible, or the possibility is increasing. Uh, as the CCP is facing more and more internal problems, like we just talked before. And and uh, like I said, there is no way that the CCP can see a, a way out, out of all their political, financial, and social crisis. So under these kind of circumstances, maybe the only way out for the CCP is to create an external enemy and bring the entire nation to a status of war. Then you can have excuse to take away people's money and property and, and uh, you know, have tighter control about uh, everybody. So also, I think Xi Jinping has one of the excuses he convinced other CCP leaders to agree for him to stay in power forever or gain another term or another 10 years is there was an agreement or a understanding that he will take back Taiwan. Like they, they use, always use the word take back Taiwan. Uh, if he is re uh, elect, we can't say elected, there's no election, he, he can remain <laughs> in power. So I think the possibility uh, is is rising and it's it's very very high and uh, especially um, 
after the Russia invasion in uh, in Ukraine, I think that gives the Xi Jinping, or maybe they or they've already discussed it in secret, and they work together like. Li Zhanshu, the CCP's third leader, uh, recently admitted that CCP fully under, understands and supports Russia's action against Ukraine, and the CCP actually offered cooperation and support in many ways. So I think the possibility is very, very high, and the international world should be very well prepared. Okay, so you live in the United States now, right? You live in New York. Yes. And yes. you have, how long have you been in the United States? 11 years. Okay. So what do you think, in your opinion at this point, if China was to militarily invade Taiwan, should the mm -hmm. U.S. send our military? Because then essentially we're in a war with China, which is serious to say the least. Mm -hmm. I think... That, of course, is a question for the U.S. to decide. But I think it is better off to give them a very clear message that the U.S. will defend Taiwan militarily. Now, I think that uh, will maybe, maybe get a deter, deter, could be a deterrence factor and make the CCP think a little bit, or maybe they've already decided that a war against Taiwan will be a war against the U.S. Uh, so maybe they are already preparing for a war against the U.S. So whether U.S. Uh, get involved or not, I think there is no way to turn away from this matter. Okay, because when you look at what's going on in the Ukraine, so mm -hmm. far we have not engaged militarily, although we have sent billions of dollars to mm -hmm. the Ukrainian government to and supplied them with weapons. So mm -hmm. it's it's a, a proxy war at this point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's not going well for Putin, and mm -hmm. I don't know. It, everything seems to keep upping one at a time. I just saw in the news yesterday that a part of the Nord Stream pipeline blew up or was blown mm -hmm. up in uh, mm -hmm. near Denmark. And they don't know who did that exactly, if it was sabotage or if we did it or if the mm -hmm. Europeans did it. But it looks like the war is escalating in the Ukraine. Yes. It doesn't look like it's winding down. And again, we haven't put one boot on the ground yet, and I don't think we want to. I don't think that mm -hmm. the American people would support that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if Taiwan would be any different. I mean, do we feel better about the Taiwan people than we do about the Ukrainian people? I don't know. They're, they're both very far away. And the last thing we want are dead American soldiers. Yes. Uh, but the problem is, uh, I think uh, we do rely on Taiwan in the semiconduct, uh, what, what, that, 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 the, the chips industry. The chip industry, right, right. If 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 that is gone, Americans do have a lot of stake in the safety of Taiwan, and the CCP knows very clearly about this. So I think they said, and uh, Taiwan is part of uh, the the world supply chain and plays a very important role, not only economically, but technology, technology, and uh, also in the supply chain. Also, Taiwan is the first democratic or republican in entire Asia and sets a very good example uh, to the entire world. So I think. I think we we might think uh, again about whether we should defend Taiwan or not. You, even if you, I think even if we don't want to get involved, there's no getting away. Like I already said, the CCP actually already. That's according uh, to. Uh, former professor of Yuan Hongbin, the CCP had already making 
plan to um, how to say uh, to target the U.S. The, 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 even the J- Japan, Taiwan. So I think if uh, we realize there's no getting away, so the more resolute we show now, maybe the less damage uh, we will do to ourselves, the more we hesitate, and that will in- give the CCP encouragement, and uh, and maybe that will make things worse. And in the end, we have to pay more price. Yeah. Well, Christmas is just a few months away, and I don't see peace on earth and goodwill towards men in the near future, unfortunately, which is always the Christmas wish. But we'll see what the next year brings. It's going to be very interesting, to say the least. Uh, Jennifer, i got to wind this down. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, Do you want to give out your website? Yes, my website is very simple, Jennifer Zeng Blog. JenniferZongBlog.com, and my YouTube channel is Inconvenient Truths by Jennifer Zeng. Okay, great. And you produce your show, uh, is it every day or weekly? Uh, it's twice per week. Twice a week. Okay, great. And it's yes. always very informative, the latest and greatest of what's going on in China, basically, yeah? Yes, many about China and the CCP. Okay, super. Thanks again for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much.